What's going on, fellow Photoshop enthusiasts? Today, we're going to cover everything you need to know about the elliptical marquee tool. So if you're ready to figure out the keys to the marquees tools, let's get to it. The marquee tool is hidden here. So if you click and hold this, you'll be able to switch to elliptical marquee tool. But I like to work with shortcuts, so I'm going to show you the shortcut version. If you press M on your keyboard, it will take you to the elliptical tool, as you see here. Now, in some of these tools, there's tools hidden within the tools. So the way to access the elliptical marquee tool is you can press M, and then if you hold down Shift, every time you press M, you'll see that it alternates between the different tools there. So if we press Shift M, it's a rectangle, Shift M again, and we are using the elliptical marquee tool. If I zoom in on the picture, I want to create a circle around this gentleman's face right here. So you'll see that if I start to do it, Photoshop doesn't do the greatest job of letting me maneuver around if I'm just clicking and dragging. The trick is, you hold down spacebar, you can reposition the circle, and then continue to adapt it. But you can't let go of the click. So once you're clicking and dragging, hold down spacebar, but don't let go of the clicking of the mouse, and then let go of the spacebar and continue to manipulate your elliptical circle. Okay, once you've created a decent selection, you can let go and it becomes a selection. That's all fair and good, but what happens if we want to add to the selection or subtract to the selection or intersect? I'll show you that in a second. So you can either click this add to selection, but I like to work with keyboard shortcuts. So if you hold down the shift key, you'll see that it transfers from this to this. And now while you're holding down shift, you can now go ahead and try to create a circle around DJ JRS here, who's one of the best DJs in Jersey. I love the man. So if I hold down spacebar, while still holding down shift, then I can continue to adjust it. And you'll notice that there's a little plus sign next to our circle, and that means that we're gonna add to selection. Whereas before, it was just a plus sign. It wasn't a plus next to it, it was just a cursor. So, when I let go, voila, look at that. Now we have both of these selected. And let's just go ahead and add the selection of these two lovebirds right here. So if I hold down shift and I create another selection and I'll use spacebar again to adjust it a bit and that's good enough. So if I let go, you'll see that all of these are selected. Now I wanna cover something very, very important and that is the feather feature. And before I do that, I want to illustrate what happens if I jump this layer. So I'm going to do Control J. And don't worry if you don't know what jump is. It's just to show you. So when you jump a layer, it takes the selection and puts it in a different layer. So this is the jump layer, basically. And when I hid this original layer, you're able to see the selection. So as you can see, we have a nice selection here, but the edges are sharp, right? Now, what would happen if I went ahead and I changed the feather to, let's say, 50? And then I went ahead and I did something similar where I created circles around all of their faces. So let's do that here. Then we'll hold down Shift. We'll create another circle for JRS and yet another circle for these two and take a look at what happens. You see how it's it almost looks feathered now? It's because this selection is not as sharp. It's feathering it down, and you'll be able to see exactly what I mean when I jump the layer once more. And guys, make sure when you're creating selections, you're on the right layer. So I was actually making a mistake. I was on this layer when I was doing the selections. But to fix it, it's easy. I don't have to reselect everything. I go back to the original layer, and then I'll hold down Control or Command on the Mac and J to jump that layer. Now let's see what happened. Ah, you see that? The borders are very faded out. 
And the way I like to think about a feather is if you look at a feather at the center of the feather, you can't really see through it. But on the edges, they're so fine, you could kind of already see the background. And this is really what feathering controls. It's how you're going to ease into the background of the photo. So to give you an example of what this looks like, let me create a, another layer that has the color red to contrast and I'll put it behind the layers. So as you can see, it does a very, very not harsh transition into the background versus this one, which is a very harsh transition into the background. And if you're doing it into something like this red background, this looks a bit better than this. However, if you wanted to make this background, let's see here, if you wanted to make it black, it can actually be a really cool effect because it's easing into the black rather than being nice and harsh towards it. And so it's something for you guys to play around with. I use feather feature a lot, but let me get back to explaining all the other aspects of the selection tool. So let's do this and get back in here. Okay, so we have our four friends selected here. And now we've covered the adding to selection and the regular new selection. Now, how do we subtract from a selection? That is going to be Alt or Option on Mac. And you're going to go ahead and hold down Alt. And you'll see that there's a minus sign next to my cursor. Watch the cursor. Now there's a minus sign next to it. And you can create another selection. Now, since we already played around with the elliptical marquee tool, let's switch over to the rectangular marquee tool. And to achieve that, you can either click here and select it, or as because I like to work with keyboard shortcuts, I'm gonna hold down Shift, and then I'm gonna press M. And it will go to the rectangular marquee tool. So, let's hold down Alt, and you'll see that it changes to this, which is the minus sign. And now if we create a selection as such, you'll see that it actually cuts away from it. And this can be very, very cool when you're working with solid objects versus, you know, people photos like this, it doesn't make too much sense. But if you're working with logo designs and stuff like that, these tools are really helpful. Now let's cover the last one. And this is the intersect with selection. What in the world does that mean? Well, I'll show you guys in a second. So, in order to access the Add to Selection, you're clicking Shift and holding Shift. In order to subtract from Selection, you're holding down Alt. And in order to intersect with Selection, you're holding down both Shift and Alt. So you're gonna see this X. Now, if I create this rectangle, around both of these and the way I'm moving it while still creating it remember you can hold down spacebar what do you guys think will happen once I let go of it I'll give you a second to think about it so when I let go of it it's only gonna keep the things that are intersecting think of a Venn diagram and only the middle section remaining so watch this I let go it got rid of everything that wasn't intersecting a more harsh example of this would be if I did this. So now it's only selecting that. And if you wanted to see the effect, then we can control J. So we can jump that selection as we did before. If we get rid of it, you'll see that it does a great job with jumping our selection to the next layer. Again, there's many ways to work guys and don't worry if you can't follow along with the layers and the jumping, you'll be a master at this soon enough if you keep at it. The cool thing about Photoshop is every time you use it, you get to learn something new and there's so many different ways to achieve different things. So don't get bothered if you don't figure it out all right away. So before I wrap up this video, I wanna shamelessly mark it for a second. I'm a photographer, I run an Instagram page, I do a lot of Latin dance photography and videography work. As you can see here, some of this content is entrepreneurship, some of it is general photography. So to get back to it, um, that was basically all the tips and tricks that I'm aware of as far as the elliptical marquee tool is concerned. And I hope that addresses some of your questions.